today we are here at the Basement Effects in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, my name is Jeff Cox, uh, owner and operator of the Basement Effects. I'm Crystal Cox, also owner and kind of artist here at the Basement Effects. My name is Wesley South. I'm uh, R and uh, sculpture, and just about everything else. So, <laughs> some of the things that we're going to be able to preview today that are projects that uh, not only what we currently have within our line, but product or products that were are currently in development. And as we move from just being within silicone, uh, focusing on silicone masks, to growing the company to expand into um, into other types of masks. The whole goal of the basement effects is to provide the highest level of realism that you can get uh, in these sort of products um, from a standpoint of the sculptural detail to the paintwork that we put into them um, and apply that to uh, other products and mediums um, that will be you know, made yeah. available as we you know, grow our, our fairly new company. Yeah, because pretty much we're we're moving anything, like I said, I always joke, it's like, if you can put it on your face, we want to be able to make it. <laughs> that means that means silicone, it means latex, uh, fiberglass, uh, leather, even on down the road, who knows. If we can make a mask out of it, we're going to do it, and we're going to pretty much give it, our, give it our all. As we're starting out with, uh, with the silicone pullover prosthetic masks, um, getting into our butcher line, which is going to be, you know, kind of a, a full line of the you know Ed Gein style skin masks, uh, body suits, accessories, pig heads, things like that. Just things because we know that you know a big, always a big, uh, a big point in most haunted houses are uh, butcher lines or butcher you know like style stuff. Um, yeah, especially in the Midwest, slaughterhouses, everything like that. The big difference between a silicone mask and the sort of mask you're going to find in a Halloween store you know every year um, is that. Uh, silicone masks are, they're almost, in my mind, one piece silicone prosthetics. Uh, the benefit of a silicone mask is you can have, you know, that, that quality makeup character that you can literally slide on, you know, and take off, you know, in seconds rather than hours. Um, but then, you know, the, the uh, level of detail in the sculptures and in the paint jobs that we do, it is like just putting on a makeup, basically. Um, and then because it is silicone, which is a uh, skin soft, very stretchy material, um, you have, rather than your standard latex mask, you have the sort of movement that comes along with, uh, with the sort of makeups that you would have. So um, I look at them less as masks and more as uh, kind of the middle ground between your classic Halloween mask and your you know, Hollywood film you know, prosthetic makeup. As much love as I have for going into a Halloween store and taking a look at all the masks that are on display, um, the goal of these are more or less to have kind of the, uh, I look at it as Hollywood quality from the haunt land. Here is an example. We were able to uh, go in different layers using uh, thickened silicone and create a burned effect. Um, so just an example of customization, but we've had customers add horns onto some of the masks. Um, you know, scars, things like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, due to the, the nature of uh, silicone, um, you can even make changes, you know, after the sculpture is finished to kind of modify it, make it your own unique character. Or um, we have an example of a mask that's having hair punched right now so that, you know, one by one individual hairs are punched into the mask. So that one ends up being a clown or, you know, has a clown nose on it. Um, this particular mask uh, doesn't usually have the, uh, the Cut, the cut grin. So this was all added. The blood, the makeup was uh, actually the, uh, the customer's design. Uh, they came up with something very specific that they wanted that we ended up doing to kind of make it a, a ghastly self-mutilated clown. This is our first, I guess, fiberglass piece. It's our um, prototype. Of yeah. Uh, this, uh, we'll call it the Fisto. It'll, uh, like I said, it's kind of a serial killer kind of line. Like I said, there'll be, there'll be devils. There'll be, you know, everything later. There'll be hockey masks. There'll be if you can think of it, it's now, pretty much, yeah. When it's, you think of the staple uh, slasher film. Especially sort of. back in the 80s, yeah, because everybody was like, oh, Halloween mask, let's put it on, and oh, we've got a character now. It's kind of like that. It's These come in different paint schemes, and the cool thing about these being out of fiberglass are just, in a way, like silicone, 
is that we can alter them, you know, take the horns off, you know, change the ears, stuff like that. It's a little bit more work, but it's a piece it's a piece that's pretty much going to be passed down from generation to generation. Ten years down the road, something happens to one of these, you know, hopefully I'll still be here and I'll <laughs> fix it. <laughs> but it should last. It's a, it's a durable product. And so we're basically wanting to take the, the same sort of passion that we have for detail and apply it to uh, latex masks, because like Wes said, in haunted houses, um, you have you're going to have uh, you know characters that can benefit from silicone. You're going to have characters that can benefit um, you know from latex or fiberglass or other mediums. And, and it then also yeah, and it also fits like I, I was explaining to you guys earlier. It's about it's also about being able to bring give a little something for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, these are these are tools, and that's it's one of the ways to look at them. They're collectors' pieces, they're masks, but they're also tools. And these are people who are feeding their families and trying to do their craft every year, especially with haunted houses and everything. And it's, it's, it's becoming a really big thing. And it's kind of, like I said, giving them quality tools that they can use, something that's not gonna tear or rip. And if, and if it ever does, like I said, we're gonna fix it. But we hope that never happens. <laughs> uh, but we back everything up, but it's, it's trying to give them the most, the best quality firsthand instead of having something rip or tear that you know, might not might be mass produced. Uh, like I said, these are all like especially with the latex ones. Each one's going to be hand poured uh, and not mass, not in a mass quantity. They'd be one at a time when the order comes. Um, seam patched, painted, very thick latex, not flimsy, hold their shape. Uh, and as far as everything else, it's going to be coming too. It's going to be the same way. We are definitely capable of handling uh, more orders. Uh, no order too big or small. If you go to thebasementfx.com. Uh, or go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Basement Effects. Um, you can shop from our website or from uh, Facebook too. And uh, currently we're at about a uh, four to six week turnaround time. As we get uh, later into the season, uh, there will be a cutoff. We currently uh, don't have a Halloween cutoff, so if you want a high-end, uh, highly detailed silicone mask from The Basement Effects, um, you're still good to place your order. I love that you've been wearing gloves this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs>